हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर रमेश कोठारी फ्रॉम सौराष्ट्र यूनिवर्सिटी राजकोट गुजरात टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल ऑन ऑक्सीडेटिव फॉस्फो रिलेशन अंडर पेपर कार्बोहाइड्रेट मेटाबॉलिज्म सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट एस सी वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न in this module we will try to understand the oxidative phosphorylation as the main source of energy in aerobic cell then the to understand electron transport chain in its component and we will also try to understand mechanism of oxidative phosphorylation oxidative phosphorylation the metabolic pathway in which cells use enzymes to oxidize nutrients thereby releasing energy which is used to reform adenosine triphosphates in most eukaryotes this take place inside mitochondria almost all aerobic organisms carry out oxidative phosphorylation this pathway is probably so pervasive because it is a highly efficient way of releasing energy compared to the alternative fermentation process such as anaerobic glycolysis during oxidative phosphorylation electrons are transferred from electron donor to electron acceptor such as oxygen in redox reaction this redox reactions release energy which in turn used to form adenosine triphosphates in eukaryotes these redox reactions are carried out by a series of protein complexes within the inner membrane of the cells mitochondria where in prokaryotes these proteins are located in cells intermembrane space this linked set to proteins are called electron transport chain in eukaryotes five main protein uh, complexes are involved whereas in prokaryote many different enzymes are present using a variety of electron donors and acceptors oxidative phosphorylation is the process where the free energy that is released when electron are transferred along the electron transport that is respiratory chain is coupled to formation of adenosine triphosphate from adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate in intact mitochondria and in special preparations of sub mitochondrial particle the transport of electron and phosphorylation of adenosine diphosphate are tightly coupled reactions in damaged mitochondria respiration that is electron transport may occur unaccompanied by oxidative phosphorylation when this happen the mitochondria are said to be uncoupled oxidative phosphorylation is the main source of energy in aerobic cell in uncoupled mitochondria because electron transport may still occur free energy may still be released as the electrons are transferred down the transport chain however this energy is not trapped as atp and appears instead as heat an oxidative phosphorylation being a mitochondrial process is studied by isolating and then fragmenting mitochondria in the first fragmentation step the outer membrane is removed by a treatment with various detergent the phospholipids and digitonin two particulate fragments 
results. These are the outer membrane either in the form of vesicle or completely solubilized and second the inner membrane plus the mitochondrial metric enzymes. This fraction contains the enzymes of the electron transport chain, those of oxidative phosphorylation and those of the trichyboroxylic acid cycle. A soluble fraction containing the enzymes from the intermembrane space is also obtained. The inner membrane friction is then subjected to mild sonication. The enzymes present in the matrix are released into the medium and the inner membrane forms vesicle. The vesiculated inner membrane can carry out coupled electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation. If the phosphorylating particles are abraded, knob-like projections containing the so-called coupling factors are separated from the membrane, which now cannot carry out phosphorylation of ADP to ATP, but can still transport electrons through the transport chain. Treatment of the transport chain fraction of the inner membrane with bile salt or potassium collet often used sequentially breaks the fraction up into the four complex concerned with electron transport. These isolated complexes can be used to study electron transport in reconstitution experiment. Orientation of the enzyme of electron transport chain in relation to coupled oxidative phosphorylation is illustrated in the figure. Note that the succinate dehydrogenase face the mitochondrial matrix from which it accept electron from succinyl coenzyme A synthetase of the TCA cycle. The cytochrome A to A3 complex likewise faces the matrix from it will obtain oxygen for the final step of electron transport chain. So is the coupling of phosphorylation to respiration. Oxidative phosphorylation has been studied in isolated mitochondria or in phosphorylating submitochondrial particles. By incubating them in an oxygen electrode cells called an oxygraphic cell. The oxygen cell measure the concentration of oxygen dissolved in suspension medium and thus indicates the mitochondrial oxygen uptake. Phosphorylation is assessed by measuring the rate of disappearance of ADP and inorganic phosphate. Figure shows a typical oxygen electrode tracing point A on the graph. A substrate inorganic phosphate and magnesium are all added to the suspension medium. The horizontal tracing indicate that there is no oxygen uptake from the mitochondria free medium. At point B, an aliquot of a mitochondrial suspension is added. A slow rate of oxygen uptake ensure is indicated by the rate of disappearance of oxygen from the medium. This oxygen uptake or respiration is called state 4 respiration and is probably related to the degree of uncoupling of the mitochondria rather than to the utilization of endogenous substrate. At point C, a measured amount of ADP is added producing a more rapid rate of glucose oxygen uptake. This rate known as state 2 respiration is limited only by the rate at which the transport chain can transfer electron from the substrate to oxygen. At point D, all the added ADP has been phosphorylated to ATP and the rate of oxygen uptake decline back to the state 4 rate. State 4 respiration is therefore limited by the concentration of ADP. Point E and F will be discussed now.
the accepted control ratio the accepted being adp is defined as rate of respiration of stage 3 upon rate of respiration in stage 4 the acceptor control ratio is a measure of the degree to which electron transport and phosphorylation are coupled tightly coupled mitochondria have acceptor control ratio of about 10 uncoupled mitochondria may have ratio as low as 1 the value produced when state 3 and the state 4 respiration rate are equal the adp oxygen ratio is a measure of how many moles of atp are formed per gram atom of oxygen utilized this is usually measured as the number of mole of adp or inorganic phosphate which disappear per gram of atom of oxygen utilized if at point a in figure the substrate added was mallet the adp oxygen ratio would be three because of following step take place mallet when it is oxidized donates its electron to oxidize nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide when the reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide is formed enters the electron transport chain in it does so as the level of nadh q the coenzyme q reductase complex as the electron pass down the chain three atp are formed per atom of oxygen utilized if alpha glycerophosphate has been added as the substrate at a point a in figure the adp oxygen ratio would have been two because some electrons are derived from the oxidized flavin adenine dinucleotide fd linked dehydrogenase which oxidize the substrate these electrons enter the transport chain at a level of coenzyme q therefore they miss the formation of atp at the nadh q reductase complex uncoupler of oxidative phosphorylation are compounds that allow mitochondria to utilize oxygen regardless of whether or not there is any phosphate acceptor that is adp available at point e on the graph in figure an uncoupler has been added this cause a marked increase in oxygen uptake the new rate being greater than the state 3 rate not that no adenosine diphosphate had to be added for the uncoupler to boost the oxygen uptake rate to the new graph level in fact if at point f adp is added there will be no further change in the oxygen uptake rate prototype uncoupler 2 4 dinitrophenol is a classic uncoupler of oxidative phosphorylation it was once used as a weight loss drug but was discontinued because of its toxicity dicumarol and similar drugs are used clinically as anticoagulants the closely related warfarin is also used as red poison mainly because of its anticoagulant action but also because it uncouple oxidative phosphorylation calcium transport into the mitochondria also change the relationship between electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation the mitochondria of a mammalian cell transport calcium against a concentration gradient and this process is energetically coupled to electron transport the uptake of calcium by mitochondria is also obligatory coupled to uptake of a corresponding amount of inorganic phosphate for every pair of electrons that pass from nadh to oxygen 
along the electron transport chain, approximately six calcium ions are accumulated in the mitochondria. That is two calcium ions per energy conserving site. That is per site of ATP formation are retained as shown in figure four. Note that in the diagram, the possibility of a fourth calcium accumulating site is indicated. In contrast to the general similarity in, in, in structure and function of electron transport chain in eukaryotes, bacteria and archaea retain a large variety of electron transport enzymes. These use an equal equally wide set of chemical as substrate. In common with eukaryotes, prokaryotic electron transport use the energy release from oxidation of a substrate to pump ion across a membrane and generate an electrochemical gradient. In the bacteria, oxidative phosphorylation in Escherichia coli is understood in most detail while archaeal system are at present poorly understood. The main difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic oxidative phosphorylation is that bacteria and archaea use many different substances to donate or accept electrons. This allow prokaryotes to grow under a wide variety of environmental conditions. In E. coli, for example, oxidative phosphorylation can be driven by a large number of pairs of reducing agents and oxidizing agents. Phosphorylation inhibitors. Oligomycin prevent both the stimulation of oxygen uptake by ADP and the phosphorylation of ADP to ATP. If oligomycin is added to a mitochondrial preparation in the presence of substrate, inorganic phosphate, magnesium and adenosine diphosphate, the state 3 respiration is immediately reduced to the state 4 rate. Characteristically, the inhibition of oxygen uptake by oligomycin is relieved by the addition of dinitrophenol, which stimulate the usual fast uncoupled rate of oxygen uptake. Oligomycin appears to act by interfering with the ATP synthetase reaction which causes the phosphorylation of ADP. Inhibitors of uh, ADP ATP carrier. Atractylosid seed is a toxic glycoside from a Mediterranean thus boncret acid is derived from mold that grows on coconut flesh. Both of these compounds block the translocase as it is responsible for the movement of adenosine diphosphate to adenosine triphosphate across the inner mitochondrial membrane. The addition of either inhibitor or a mitochondrial preparation Incubated in the presence of substrate, inorganic phosphate, magnesium, iron, and ADP reduce the state 3 respiration to state 4. Mechanism of oxidative phosphorylation. Three major proposals for the mechanism of oxidative phosphorylation have been considered. The chemical coupling hypothesis developed from the concept of an intermediate common to both electron transport and phosphorylation of ADP, the conformational coupling hypothesis and the chemosmotic coupling hypothesis is probably the most widely accepted of current theories of oxidative phosphorylation. The chemical coupling hypothesis. The chemical coupling hypothesis developed from the concept of an intermediate common to both electron transport and phosphorylation of ADP. The electron transport is postulated to generate a high energy compound which is usually in secondary reaction to form adenosine triphosphate from adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate. A model for the reaction 
in the step in glycolysis at which glyceraldehyde triphosphate phosphorylated to 1,3 diphosphoglycerate after which 1,3 diphosphoglycerate transfer one of its phosphate to ADP to form ATP. It is postulated that as electron move down the transport chain a phosphorylated intermediate is formed which in turn transfer its phosphorylate group to ADP. Figure 5 is a simplified diagram of the chemical coupling hypothesis. The reduced form of A is oxidized by B forming the reduced form of B that is BH2 intermediate Y to form YBH2. C oxidized to YBH2 to form a reduced C and a higher energy intermediate that is YB. In order to receive B which is required if the chain is to recycle YB interact with another intermediate that is X to form the high energy compound XY and free B. XY can interact with inorganic phosphate to give yet another high energy intermediate that is XP. XP transfer its phosphate to ADP to form ATP and free X. The complexities of the scheme outlined in figure 5 had to introduce order to explain the action of uncoupler like uh, dinitrophenol and phosphorylation inhibitors such as oligomycin. It is postulated that DNP can substitute for X in the reaction that regenerate B from YB so that DNP interact with Y to form DNPY. However, DNPY is too unstable to interact with inorganic phosphate and breaks down. Y is available to allow electron transport to continue but no ATP is formed. Because oligomycin is postulated to act at the level of adenosine triphosphate synthase, it allow no regeneration of the X intermediate from XP. Therefore, X cannot enter back into the cycle so that the electron transport shut down. An uncoupler in contrast by substituting for X would allow electron transport but not phosphorylation to resume. The absence of data supporting the existence of the postulated intermediate is one of the major difficulty with this hypothesis. The conformational coupling hypothesis when mitochondria are carrying out electron transport associated with oxidative phosphorylation, they change their architecture. In stage 4 respiration, the mitochondria Christi have relaxed appearance and are said to be in the orthodox state. In the presence of ADP, when state of respiration is occurring, the Christi are very tightly condensed and this condition is known to the condensed state. It has been postulated that the change in the architecture reflect change in the relationship of different component of the electron transport chain to one another and that this conformational change represent the conformation of the high energy state. Chemiosmotic coupling hypothesis. The chemiosmotic coupling hypothesis is uh, probably the most widely accepted of current theories of oxidative phosphorylation. It is the proposed that an electrochemical gradient of proton across the mitochondrial inner membrane serve as means of coupling the energy flow of electron transport to formation of the ATP. The electron carriers are hypothesized to act as pump which cause vectorial that is directional pumping of proton ion across the membrane as shown in figure 6. 
because of proton ions are because of hydrogen ions are charged particle the flow of free energy across the inner membrane due to the combination of a concentration gradient and a chafe gradient in the electron transport chain the hydrogen ion are separated from the electron thus according to the chemiosmotic coupling hypothesis as the electrons moves down the chain of the proton ions are expelling protons are expelled traveling from the matrix to the intermembrane space note that the transport sequence shown in figure is different from sequence in chapter our discussion discussed before because the chemiosmotic coupling hypothesis require a reversal of order of coenzyme q and cytochrome uh, b in order to allow a directional pumping of the uh, proton this modification is not unreasonable in view of the difficulty in assigning the liquid soluble quino to a particle position in electron transport chain the chemiosmotic coupling hypothesis is then proposed that the proton in the intermembrane pass through the inner membrane and back into the matrix at a special site or pore where atp synthase reside dissipation of energy that occurs as the proton pass down the concentration gradient to matrix allow the phosphorylation of adp to atp by synthetase to account for the action of for dinitrophenol oligomycin and calcium the chemiosmotic coupling hypothesis proposed that dinitrophenol being a liquid soluble molecule create hall in the inner membrane rendering it permeable to hydrogen ion so that an hydrogen ion gradient cannot be formed oligomycin blocks the atp synthetase reaction and electron transport sees the gradient pack up calcium transport act to break down the proton gradient so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module you like many other organisms need oxygen to live as you know if you are ever tried to hold your breath for too long lack of oxygen can make you feel dizzy or even black out and prolonged lack of oxygen can even cause death but have you ever wondered why that's the case or what exactly your body does with all that oxygen as it turn out the reason you need oxygen is so your cell can use this molecular molecule during oxidative phosphorylation the final stage of cellular respiration oxidative phosphorylation is made up of two closely connected component as we discuss the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis in the electron transport chain electrons are passed from one molecules to another and energy release in this electron transfer is used to form an electrochemical gradient in chemiosmosis the energy stored in the gradient is used to make adenosine triphosphate the energy released by electrons flowing through this electron transport chain is used to transport proton across the inner mitochondrial membrane in a process called electron transport this generate potential energy in the form of a ph gradient and an electrical potential across this membrane this store of energy is tapped by allowing proton to flow back across the membrane and down this gradient through a large enzyme called atp atp synthase this process is known as chemiosmosis this enzyme use this energy to generate atp from adenosine diphosphate in a 
phosphorylation reaction. This reaction is driven by a protein, the protein uh, proton flow, which forces the rotation of a part of enzymes. The ATP synthase is a rotary mechanical motor. Although oxidative phosphorylation is a vital part of metabolism, it produces reactive oxygen species such as superoxide and hydrogen peroxide which lead to propagation of free radicals damaging cells and contributing to disease and possibly aging. The enzymes carrying out this metabolic pathway are also target of many drugs and poisons that inhibit their activities. So student this is all about oxidative phosphorylation. Thank you.